Good morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Kimberling City's RPM Daily Devotionals, reaching the lost for Christ, preparing the saints for service, and magnifying the Lord. Now let's join Associate Pastor James Talley as he brings us today's message. Well, good morning, folks. Uh, you've made it to Thursday. I'm glad you could, uh, could join me today uh, here with our RPM Daily Devotions. Um, we've been talking about giving. We've been talking about stewardship, biblical stewardship. What does that look like? Uh, we've been talking about that all week. And, and I've repeated myself a lot this week, and I know I have, and it's been on purpose. I really want to drive these points home. I want to make sure that, that you get them. I want to make sure I've got them down so that I fully understand uh, what we're talking about here. So we've been talking about biblical stewardship, um, and we've laid out some principles here. Uh, we talked about that God owns everything. We own nothing. Uh, that we honor God by giving him a tithe of that which he has entrusted to us. And what is a tithe? A tithe is the first 10%. It's the first fruits. It's the best of what, of what he's entrusted uh, us with. And then we looked at what are we supposed to do with that tithe? Biblically, we're supposed to bring that tithe, that whole 10%, into the local church that, that we attend. Um, I'm obviously here with First Baptist Church, Kimberling City. Perhaps you're watching uh, and you're a member of another church. Biblically, the tithe, your tithe is supposed to go to your local church. And so today, um, we've, we've talked about a tithe. What does that mean? Today, we're going to talk about giving over and above that tithe. Um, and so you may be thinking... My goodness, he's just, he, he's money, 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 you know, isn't, isn't, isn't giving a tithe, isn't tithing enough? Um, and we're oftentimes caught thinking that, and oftentimes uh, some are, are caught thinking, well, I finally made it to being able to tithe, and so I've, I've arrived, so to speak. Well, in truth, that's just the bottom. That's the entry level. That's just the beginning. Listen to what Randy Alcorn writes about this. He said, tithing isn't the ceiling of giving. It's the floor. It's not the finish line of giving. It's just the starting blocks. Tithes can be the training wheels to launch us into the mindset, skills, and habits of grace giving. You see, the Bible teaches generosity. And generosity isn't something that's really taught uh, or that we really experience out in uh, the, the world around us, but the Bible very clearly teaches generosity. And generosity, we have to view that as an investment in eternity. What if you and I could truly see what we give? What if you and I could see that what our, what our tithes and, and offerings, what they really mean? Uh, in, in, in eternity? What if we could see them and begin to see them as truly eternal investments? Listen to what John Maxwell writes about. What would happen if we saw giving as a way of investing? If we gave our giving portfolio the same attention we give our retirement portfolio? What would happen if we stopped asking how much do I have to give and started asking how much can I invest in eternity by giving. How would our lives change if we became aware of the rewards of faithfully investing our resources? So why should we practice giving above and beyond our tithe? Um, first, we look at, at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, where Paul writes, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. You see, we should give because God gave. God gave his all. God gave us his son, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrifice for our sins. God gave us the greatest gift that we could ever imagine. You know, we just came out of, out of celebrating Christmas and we're, we're celebrating the birth of Christ and the greatest gift that ever came to this world was Jesus. And so as a believer, the grace that God has shown you and me in sending Jesus should motivate us to give. God has set the example for us to give, and so now we should follow that example. Another reason to give generously is in the, the very next chapter, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, um, verses 6 through 10. Let me read those and 
it'll it'll help us to understand this a little bit. Verses six through ten, chapter nine, Second Corinthians. The point is this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He supplies need, excuse me, he supplies seed to the sower and bread for food and will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You see, God gives to us with a free and generous heart. And so he he asks for us to give with a, a free and a generous heart, with a great attitude and with full trust that he is going to provide for us. You see there in, in that passage, the, uh, the, the folks he, that, that Paul is writing about, he says they, they didn't eat the seed. They didn't eat what they had. They invested it. They planted it. And God gave a harvest for them uh, that was well beyond what they had. Again, this isn't a prosperity gospel. This isn't saying, hey, if you send me $10, God's going to send you 100 Nothing like that. The blessings that God pours out on us um, are, again, what we talked about a couple of days ago, that it's the filling of God's Spirit with, within us, that God is working in us and through us and around us, and we are obedient to Him. When we are obedient to Him, the fellowship with God, the blessing that comes from that, doesn't. It, it's far beyond financial. Some may experience financial uh, blessing, but others may not. But it, it, the, the ultimate blessing is far beyond what finances could uh, could provide because God is going to meet our needs. What we see in this passage is, is a reminder that, that God opens up the gates, uh, the floodgates, and he pours his blessings down. They shower down on us. And he, we have to remember that he is able to do that. We have to remember that God's grace abounds and overflows to us. And we have to remember that God will always meet our needs. When we are living in obedience to him, following him, and following his plan for our finances, for everything else really in our, our entire life that he has entrusted us with. Because remember, he owns it all anyway. We own nothing. He just asks that, that we honor him by giving that first 10% back to him through the local church. Uh, you ask, how, can we, uh, how are ways that we can give over and above uh, our tithe? Uh, you know, there are a lot of ways. Here at this church, um, we have the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, money that's taken up specifically for, uh, for missions. Same thing with, uh, with Lottie Moon. Uh, Christmas offering, money that is that is uh, collected, uh, oh, supposed to be over and above our tithe, that is taken specifically for missions, uh, state missions offering. That's money that is taken up for missions here in the state of Missouri. Um, it goes, you know, to to our state convention, but it comes back to us in uh, different ministry projects, missions projects that we have to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, Rehoboth will be uh, observing Rehoboth here at the end of the month, and and you think, well, how is how is paying off debt on a building? That's all part. It all works together for the mission of the church, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, but that is all part of reaching people for uh, for Christ. Operation Christmas Child, shoebox ministry, another great thing that happens here. That is money that is to be given over and above our tithe. Uh, the list could go on and on, uh, whether it's things in this church, outside of this church. The point is, God wants us to be generous. He calls for us to be generous because He has been exceedingly generous with what He has provided to you and me through Jesus Christ. So think about that today. And, uh, and let me pray for you, and we'll get back together tomorrow morning. Father, thank you again 
uh, for the time that we've had. Thank you for the grace that you show us. God, thank you for the generosity that you demonstrated in sending Jesus to be our Savior. God, may we learn and grow and become uh, better givers, generous givers uh, in everything that we do, not just with our finances, but everything about our lives. Thank you again, Lord, in Christ I pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today. We invite you to watch RPM Daily Devotionals each week, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. For more information on First Baptist Church and its ministries, go to fbckc.com. From First Baptist Church of Kimberling City, have a blessed day.